Hola, mi amigos. This is Kai Pacha with the Weekly Paleo Report for January 24th, 2018, and the moon is in Taurus. I don't know if you can see those bacas. We got the cows and the bulls back there. There's, there's one Jonathan Livingston cow over there on the left. <laughs> He's all by himself. Sometimes they're down here, sometimes they're up there. This is uh, right up uh, behind where I live. Anyway, now this moon. Moon goes into Gemini on Friday. And uh, she moves into, well, actually, I mean, she is uh, square the sun. We have our, our first quarter square uh, today, yeah. And then she goes into Gemini, sorry about that. Uh, after that, she moves into Cancer on Sunday, okay, opposes Pluto and Saturn and all that happy stuff. And then, you know, by Tuesday, she's out of Cancer into Leo, getting ready for the great total lunar eclipse on Wednesday. Oh yes, the 31st at 11 degrees, 37 minutes of Leo and Aquarius. I'll be talking about that next week. And, well, maybe a little bit today because it's all going on. So, I'm up here in the, uh, I came up out of the creeks and the forest and the trees. Why? Because Mars is going into Sagittarius, baby. On Friday, Sag, the great outdoors, the mountains, the trees, the forests, na nature and natural law. Freaking awesome. Yeah. And, you know, Mercury is, in addition to that, today Mercury is conjunct Pluto. So we have a little bit of a polarization, okay, uh, down, deep thinking. And then, of course, in a couple of days it picks up again. Mars goes into Sag. That's going to be great. Uh, Saturday moon trines the sun and another big one there on Sunday all right is that Mercury squares Uranus so it hits Pluto today and then over the next few days basically it's like it, it's like the messenger you know that just kind of goes along and says well I'm gonna have a little conference with Pluto here pick up a little you know new info and then I'm you know, gonna you know throw it down to Uranus over there <laughs> in the late degrees okay of uh aries uh what else do i want to talk about today well i mean venus is coming up the sun and venus are basically traveling together okay you know for the you know really the next couple of weeks jupiter is still square the moon's nodes i can talk a little bit about that but the sun and venus coming along here are really um coming into conjunct the south node of the moon so this total lunar eclipse is actually opposite, not just the sun, not just the south node of the moon, but also Venus. Oh yeah. And here we're coming up to, this is what I call meditation rock. This is a great freaking rock up here. It's, it's nice and flat on the top. And a lot of times I like to just sit up there and maybe I'll try to do the report up there. I don't know. But, uh, one way or the other, I'll talk at you from the other side of the camera. Okay, let's do this thing. Where did we leave off last week? Major Tom was on the lifting pad, baby, in the rocket, ready to take off. <laughs> I did get some complaints because I didn't do Pisces. Well, yeah, I didn't do Pisces because we're not in Pisces yet. And we're in Aquarius. Venus is in Aquarius. The sun went into Aquarius. A couple of weeks, Mercury is going to be coming into Aquarius. South node of the moon is in Aquarius. Aquarius, Aquarius. I did a whole webinar on this uh, lunar eclipse, mo nodes going through Aquarius and Leo, uh, and it's um, for my community. You can check out getting into my community. It's like really awesome. There's all kinds of stuff going on in there and readings and question and answer forums and videos and the dream team and it's all going on over there. But for today, I'm gonna just like try to squeeze it all down, sum it all up. What the heck is Aquarius about? What is this time about? Last week I started getting into it a little bit. It is about venturing into the unknown. Aquarius is the 11th sign of the zodiac. It rules the 11th house of the zodiac. It's 11 out of 12. 
So like I said last week, I went all through it. And Aquarius is about global, yeah, global consciousness, human consciousness. It's political. It's the United Nations. It's the World Wide Web. It's mathematics and astronomy and astrophysics. It's like what really takes us. There's nothing personal about it. So I talked about non-attachment, Major Tom leaving Earth, family, home, roots, everything behind to go out into the future, into the higher, higher, higher realms. Talk to the extraterrestrial intelligence. <laughs> so that's what this time is about. If you've got Aquarius in your chart, especially like Moon, South Node of the Moon, Pluto in the 11th house, these kinds of signatures indicate past lifetimes where you were, what? Outside. And that's what the mantra has to do with today is being outside the matrix. When you're outside the game and you're not attached to winning or losing, you're not attached to power and glory, okay, or security. When you're not attached, then you can really see completely, clearly, and objectively what is going on in the game. When you're in the game, when you're in the forest, you see the trees, right? When you're up, you see the whole forest and you see what's going on down there. And so this is a very, you know, and, and, and this is a stage in the evolutionary process that has to do with rebelling rebelling against the consensus, rebelling against the status quo from outside. I see the future. I see beyond. Aquarius in the 11th house has to do with the future. From that spaceship, Major Tom is going to see that tiny little planet get farther and farther away until it probably disappears by the time he gets to the galactic center. <laughs> so things get smaller. Things get reduced. Okay, but just like in an, a scientific experiment or under a microscope, you know, it's like you can see into the little microbes world, you know, from, you know, from way up in that third eye awakening, you can see the little humans, you know, crawling across the planet, see what they're doing to each other, see what they're doing to the planet. Yeah. <sighs> see who's evolving and who's not. <laughs> Oh my goodness. So this is all about Aquarius is raising the bar, improving. We rebel against what is limiting the patriarchy, the institutions, the laws or the rules that are limiting our free expression, that are limiting us from being liberated. And also I have to bring in this other aspect because it's the polarity to Leo. Yeah? God, my hair's like bothering the hell out of me, man. Wind's blowing in the wrong direction. Anyway, speaking about Leo, self-interest. So this is the axis of creativity. Leo is creative. Aquarius is this creative genius. This is the creativity axis. But Leo is about, I am the creator. I'm the star of the show. I am the one. I've got it happening. Life is pouring through me. And that needs to be balanced by Aquarius. Aquarius is about the good of the future. Like I said, the good of the community, the good of everybody else. So this is a time this week, particularly with Jupiter squaring these moon's nodes in Scorpio and Venus conjuncting with the south node of the moon and, and the sun. What's that about? A lot of it's about money. Scorpio is about money. Venus is about money. Yeah, my money. Like this is the money can be where the rubber hits the road, <laughs> you know, it's like, is it my money or, uh, you know, is it our money? <laughs> you know, is it my planet or is it our planet? Okay. It's just really, this is the place and particularly with Mercury coming into Pluto. What's that? Pluto 
can be obsessive compulsive forms of behavior because we are emotionally deeply ingrained and attached deep down within our soul. So when Mercury comes around to Pluto, we can be having some obsessive compulsive thought patterns. You know where the same thought goes over or I want to write that email or I want to write that letter or I've got to have that conversation or it's just like you know and we can just like that tape can run over and over and over again because it's getting fed juice kundalini from our Pluto is our emotional yeah our deep soul emotional consciousness and so this is all about transformation Pluto is evolution and transformation. So this is a time today of Mercury coming around and having deep, intense, Pluto is intensity and it's evolution and transformation through intense what? Conversation. Yeah, communication. Uncovering. And what's this, what's this going to be about? Chances are it's going to be about money. Chances are it's going to be about possessions, about what's mine and what's ours, okay? About what is yours or what is mine, or if you're claiming a, a you know, a something that is mine, or I want to claim something you think is yours, this kind of energy is really powerful now. We want to see money as energy, and it's really. It's a blessing and a curse, just like everything else where we live in a polarized, dualistic consciousness of the ego and planet Earth and Saturn and time and space. We live in this world. And living in this world is where we come into, you know, money is this expression of our values, our priorities, what I value the most. What society values the most, the price goes up. <laughs> when it becomes more popular, okay, when it becomes more fashionable, okay, boom, 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 yeah, it becomes more valuable. So, you know, all of this energy, this financial energy, is really, uh, it's, it's an expression of an individual's priorities and an individual's values. And what we want to be doing in order to create the new paradigm, in order to create community, is finding people who have the same values, who have the same priorities. Because then you're not going to run into financial hassles. Yeah, people who value love, spirituality, oneness, community, nature, Mother Earth, you know, you, 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 you know, you find these people and they're not going to be wanting to take your money or spend your money, you know, on, you know, concrete things or, you know, destroying nature or something like that because you have similar same values. Birds of a feather flock together. And this is where Aquarius is about community. And the square is to this Jupiter in Scorpio. Do we share... Scorpio values eighth house as opposed to the second house my values my money my resources Jupiter now is saying that collectively each and every one of us can expand through combining our resources and putting our money together into bigger and bigger projects where we can really do bigger and greater things so this is a you know this is a time this is a week here of you know of having some deep conversations and this Mercury comes into square Uranus, you know this weekend Saturday and Sunday, and Uranus is shock surprise awe revelation. We can all have some profound revelations going on here, where other people, as mirrors, show us our unconscious or subconscious intentions that very often have their roots in our feelings of insecurity or our feelings that were you know ingrained conditioned in us through childhood so as we move forward you know this is a time of really you know processing 
our past, processing our childhood, our past lives, all of our limita limitating beliefs and our limitating values and coming out of fear. It's fear that leads us to greed. It's fear that leads us to possessiveness. It's fear that leads us to using other people's money, <laughs> you know, to accomplish our own ends. The wind just blew my camera over. <laughs> All right, I'll shut up. <laughs> I can get the hint, man. <laughs> So the mantra for this week, yeah? From outside the matrix, objectively looking in, I create solutions where everyone can win. Uh, rebel, step back. Don't be afraid of being criticized, ostracized, kicked out of the church or the group or the community or whatever. It's like step outside, take a step back from your relationships, from your job, your business, your boss, your family or whatever. Step outside the matrix, look at what's going on and then you can create positive solutions where the whole community, the whole family, the whole corporation, where everybody can win. It is possible, it just takes tons of negotiation, tons of non-attachment, tons of cooperation. This is like what it's all about here, you know, if we're moving into this new paradigm, you know, where we're all gonna, you know, be one and realize, you know, community. It's, you know, it starts with conversations. <laughs> Not avoiding, denying, pretending, Okay, that there's no differences. There are differences. We're all different. We don't want to bury those differences. We want to bring those differences up so we can create an even bigger, wider container where all the differences are allowed expression. That's what the creative impulse is all about. Instead of trying to, you know, live in this little world, okay, where only so many people can be satisfied, <laughs> the idea is to include everybody, but then what you have to do is, you know, expand the consciousness to be, and, and be more creative so that everybody can be fully expressed, feel safe, feel held by the container, by the community. It's possible. But it's a challenge, and that's our challenge, not only for this week, but for the 2,000 year age of Aquarius that is just beginning, particularly with the lunar eclipse coming, okay, and uh, we have a solar eclipse following it. You know, there's this, this is really gonna be emphasized over this next month in particular. So thanks for listening, wishing you the best of luck one more time. From outside the matrix, objectively looking in. I create solutions where everyone can win. Go for it. Namaste. Aloha. So much love. Ow!